We can now project Tom Swasey as the winner. NBC News is projecting that Tom Swasey has won or will win New York's third congressional district. Let's go back to Steve Kornacki at the big board. Yeah, Lawrence, I mean, we were we were saying it without saying it, I think, uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking. But basically what, what we were talking about is what just happened. We were waiting to get another update from Nassau County that would incorporate more of that same day, that Election Day vote, the vote that we figure is the most Republican friendly there is. We just got another batch. We were sitting at 45 percent counted in Nassau County before. Now it's up almost to 60 with the batch that just came in uh, about two minutes ago. And you can see Swazi's lead earlier here was a little higher. It was 15. Now it's come down to just a shade over 10 points. But again, with 60 percent of the vote in for Swazi to be 10 points ahead in the Nassau County portion of this district, which is the overwhelming share of the vote in this district. For Swazi to be ahead by 10 points right now, Democrat leading by 10, put that in perspective in this section of the district, the Nassau County section of the district in 2022, the midterm elections when George Santos won, Santos won Nassau County by 10 points. That is a Steve, swing let me, tonight. Let me just interrupt you there for one second, Steve, just to announce that Republican candidate Mazi Pillip has conceded the race. She has conceded uh, to Tom Swasey uh, tonight in the third congressional district. So that means the Democrats have added one Democrat. Probably Tom Swasey will be sworn in tomorrow at the House of Representatives. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, just again, getting the, the magnitude of the victory here for Swazi, because I think this is something. It's not just the fact that he won and that he won in a district that the Republicans had won by eight points in the 2022 midterms. This is going to be a big win uh, for Swazi tonight, because, again, right now with 60 percent in Nassau, this is a 20 point swing from Republicans winning Nassau by 10 to Swazi leading Nassau by 10. Again, expect this number, I think, to come down a little bit as the remaining vote is in. But any Democratic victory in Nassau County is huge because, again, this was 10 points for the Republicans in 2022. And what we saw in Queens earlier, we've talked about this. This may actually be all the vote in Queens. The, the city of New York is telling us that we're trying on their website. We're trying to confirm, make sure there's nothing forgotten there. But this portion of the district, this is you know, a 23 and a half point advantage for Tom Swazi here. In 2022, the Democrats won Queens. They won it by four points. This is almost 20 points north of their 2022 performance in Queens. So this is a massive, massive overperformance by Swazi relative to 2022. Again, zoom out district wide. This is a 13 point advantage for him right now. District wide again, Santos, the Republican won the district by eight points. Biden, the Democrat in 2020, won the district by eight points. This could end up being a double digit Swazi victory, possibly even exceeding what Joe Biden did here uh, four years ago. Steve, what does it tell us about turnout? Well, it's, uh, let's see what the final number comes in. I'm just looking here at Queens County here. We had been expecting this number. It looks like if this is the final number here, it's going to land at about 24,500, give or take. Uh, I think we were expecting a little bit higher in Queens. But then you take a look over here. This is over 90,000 votes out of Nassau County with 60 percent in. So this number is going to rise substantially here. This could end up being about 150, 155,000. One of the things this may tell us, and we'll have to look closer when we can see the, the town by town results, get, get a better sense of exactly where the vote's coming from. I think there are some differences here between the Queens portion of the district, demographically between the Queens portion of the district and the Nassau portion of the district. Of course, the North Shore here of Long Island, it's very wealthy, lots of college degrees. A lot of the towns along the North Shore and Long Island in particular are just overwhelmingly Democratic. And I think that type of voter, when you talk about Democrats overperforming in these special elections, we've talked about how the Democratic base over the last generation or so has really shifted towards voters with college degrees. There's this big gap, college educated, non-college educated in uh, elections now we see where Democrats continue to do better and better voters with college degrees. Republicans do better and better voters without college degrees. So that portion of the district, it, it may be a situation where that particular segment of the demographic is just so jazzed 
about tur you know turning out for Democrats in these uh, in these special elections, these off year elections, uh, that there may be a, 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 a you know the, the balance here between NASA and Queens may be more tilted toward NASA than we've seen before. Because I th oh, and again, we got a little bit more of an update right here. Now we're up to 66 percent, two thirds of the vote in in NASA. And again, as we said here, the same day vote more Republican as it comes in. This margin should tick down a little bit. But again, this is you know you're still looking here uh, at an eight. 8.2 percent, eight point lead here for Tom Swazi in Nassau with two thirds of the vote. And again, district wide, he is still 11 points and change ahead of uh, of Mazi Pillip here. So I, I think it may be that the turnout, relatively speaking, was heavier in the Nassau portion of the district than it was in the Queens portion of the district. And I think one of the questions we want to look at then is where particularly in Nassau was that most pronounced? Because, uh, again, Democrats we talk about that base being uh, those college educated voters becoming more and more democratic and becoming more and more enthusiastic about voting in all of these elections. Is that something that expressed itself uh, here? Steve, you couldn't ask for a more publicized special election. It's understandable for voters in, in congressional special elections in the past if they weren't even aware that one was happening in their district. But George Santos flaming out the way he did, getting expelled from the House of Representatives, brought attention to this race before the candidates were announced. No question about it. And I think also the context that this race was playing out in, I think, got this some national attention, too, from the standpoint of this in the 2022 midterm elections, we talk about how the Democrats did better than expected in the 2022 midterms, but they didn't quite do good enough to keep the House of Representatives. Remember that in 2022, after that election, the balance was 222 for the Republicans, 213 for the Democrats. Well, honestly, you can make a case that in the 2022 midterms, the entire reason the Democrats didn't do even better and actually hold the House of Representatives was Nassau County, was Long Island, and was New York State. This district is a perfect example of where Democrats thought they were going to win in 2022. And if you had shown them the results from all the other places in the country in 2022, they would have assumed they were winning. Because this was a district that Joe Biden won. As we say, he won this by eight points. And then Democrats lost it to George Santos in, uh, in 2022. This district down here, the fourth district of New York. Also, Nassau County, Long Island, Joe Biden won by 14 points, and then they elected a Republican in 2022. There are also two other districts in eastern Long Island that were Republican-held, that were thought to be competitive. Republicans ended up winning them very comfortably. All four of these Long Island districts ended up going Republican. Democrats thought they had a shot at all of them. And then you add in, there were two other districts in New York State. One were Sean Patrick Maloney, who was the chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the national committee that organizes the House Democratic campaign effort. He lost his own district. Democrats never saw that coming. And there's one more seat in the Syracuse area Republican held. The Republican wasn't running again. The Democrats thought they could pick it up. They lost there. All of those seats I just described, if the Democrats had won five of those in 2022, while they overperformed almost everywhere else nationally, they would have held the House of Representatives. So this was Long Island, New York. It was one of the big exceptions in the 2022 midterms to what was otherwise a pretty strong night for Democrats. As we say, it may have cost the Democrats a shot at actually retaining control of the House of Representatives. So I think that made this race more significant because this was the place where the red wave did hit in 2022. The red wave hit in these congressional elections. And frankly, there's been red waves in local elections in Nassau County and Long Island for a couple of years right now. The county executive job in Nassau County, the Democrats had won it in 2017. It's a big deal in Long Island and Nassau County politics. The Republicans won that back in 2021. There's a county legislature, you know, county commissioners in some places, a county legislature in Nassau County, Republicans have gained control of. So there have been, you know, this, the trend in Nassau and Long Long Island has been locally certainly towards Republicans and at the congressional level heavily towards Republicans. So Democrats to be able to go in that district, a district that had flipped to Republicans in 22, a district in an area that's been trending Republican, a district that may have cost them a shot at controlling the House in the 2022 midterms to go in there and to win it back. And to win it back tonight, as we're saying, there's a there's a good possibility here. This could end up a double digit victory for Swazi. 
this could end up a higher margin for Swazi than Joe Biden got here in the 2020 election. So for Democrats to win back all the ground they lost here between 20 and 22 and more, that's, that's something they're going to be bragging about because you know, this, these are the kinds of areas, the suburbs, the suburbs. New York's not going to be a competitive state, we don't think, in the fall. But the suburbs in the swing states are very well possibly going to decide this election. And so the Democrats, I think, are going to be able to take a lot of bragging rights out of this and say, look, we just won some pretty hostile suburbs, uh, you know, and uh, look for us to do that nationally. I think that's going to be their message coming out of this. You have just heard from the newest member of the House of Representatives, Tom Swasey, who will be, be returning to his old job there. He served three terms as a member of the House of Representatives representing that same district. Simon Rosenberg is back with us. Uh, Simon, there were a lot of winning <laughs> sounding messages that we heard in there for Democratic campaigns. Yeah, listen, just how great was it to hear just that expression of joy and happiness and thank you for letting it roll lawrence i mean you just don't get to see that very often in a time of rancor and you know fighting we have in the country it was just great to see and i'm really proud of tom and the team that had a big win tonight let me let me say three quick things and just responding to your question first one is yeah i mean look the the basic dynamic of this election the basic where we are is that joe biden is a good president the country is far better off today. The Democratic Party is strong in winning elections all across the country. And they have Trump, who's the most unfit guy to run for president in all of American history. And we should be very optimistic about that. And what we heard tonight was we litigated some of the tough issues. You know, this was an election that was hard fought where Republicans, you know, continue to make tough arguments against the Democrats that we've been told by many people would take us out and be debilitating and that we weren't going to be able to overcome. And here's Swazi tonight winning in a district that we lost by eight points now by you know over 10 points. It's an enormous victory. Point two is that the Republicans in the House have to recognize that what they're doing is they're running towards a failed politics right now. Everything they've done in the last few weeks, they're running faster and faster, harder and harder into MAGA. MAGA is a failed politics. It lost in 2018, it lost in 2020, it lost in 2023, 22, lost in 2023, and it's losing now again in 2024. The speaker is blowing it, and he's making huge mistakes, not just for the country, but for his party. And then finally, something that Tom said that I think is really important for everyone to hear tonight, is that we're just hungrier than they are. We're fighting harder than they are. We made two million calls. As he said, we had hundreds of thousands of door knocks, hundreds of thousands of texts, hundreds of thousands of postcards, tens of thousands of people from all over the country participated and contributed to this victory. Because what's happening in the Democratic Party is we're building the biggest political machine we've ever had. Because there are millions of people who are getting up every day and deciding that they're just, they're just not going to let their democracy slip away on their watch. And they're going to work. They're rolling up their sleeves, doing the postcards, making the calls, doing the texts. And we're kicking their ass all over the country again and again and again. And it's because of the people of our party who have decided that they're going to make sure that their democracies and freedoms don't slip away. And so big hats off to all of them tonight, because this was their win, too, in addition to Tom and the House Democrats. Simon Roseberg, thank you very much for joining our coverage of this election tonight.